Thank you. Yeah, so hi everybody, uh, my name is James Peel and I am product manager for OpsView, which really translates into me being uh, project lead for the OpsView software project. Um, before I start actually, so I don't run out of time at the end, um, what I'm going to do after this um, presentation is um, wander off to the bar behind the main Johnson Metro Theatre. So if anybody wants to ask any questions or have a chat then, then I'll be at the bar hanging around probably 5 to 5.30. Um, so catch me then, and if you've got some time after this, obviously I'll take questions as well. Just so I can sort of get, get a feel for the, um, for the audience, um, who in the audience sort of has heard of Opsio and knows a bit about it? So hands up, okay, a few of you. And is anyone actually using it? Okay, a few of you. <laughs> so um, for those of you who have never heard of Opsio and don't know anything about it, then um, obviously hopefully this will be a brief introduction. I'm not going to go into too much depth, but it will give you an idea about what the project is and what it does and uh, who we are. If you know a little bit about it, then um, um, hopefully I'll give you a bit more insight into how we work and what's happening at the moment. And if you know a lot, um, then at the end I'll talk about what plans we've got for the future briefly. So in a nutshell, um, OpsView simplifies monitoring of large computer networks. So I'll talk about the simplified bit in a minute, um, which really comes down to sort of how we design the framework around the system and how you actually manage the monitoring system. And when we say computer networks, we also mean computer operating systems and applications. In fact, um, OpsView is used quite a lot for monitoring applications as well as the networks. So in terms of what OpsView does, the um, first thing to say is it's based on Nagios. So we use a Nagios monitoring, we call it the monitoring framework. Obviously we accept that Nagios is a standalone monitoring tool. And what we've done is we've built a lot of functionality around Nagios, including the management framework and extended what it can do in many areas. So basically OpsView is an extension of Nagios. And in the early days it really was just a series of extensions to Nagios. Uh, we've integrated many open source components, and as you see at the bottom, OpsView is completely open source. So part of what OpsView does is brings together a number of other open source components all under one umbrella. And OpsView is designed for simplifying the task of managing your monitoring system. The software is commercially backed by Opsira, um, so Opsira basically pay for the developer's time and effectively the main sponsor of the project. And as I said, um, completely open source. So what features does OpsView have? Firstly, as I said, um, it has um, a web-based tool for configuring and managing OpsView. So obviously I accept, I mean, everyone in this room I'm sure is quite capable of, um, of manipulating the configuration files that Nagios uses. And OpsView isn't designed to sort of um, dumb down that process. Really, the reason for having this web-based framework is to make it more efficient um, and allow you to manage very large systems so it scales up. Um, Let's grab a sip of water. Yeah, and, and it just really, really is there to um, make your job more efficient rather than sort of saying, well, you know, you're not capable of handling these config files, we're going to give you a web UI. So it's not about dumbing down at all. Another key feature is um, obviously has distributed monitoring. Um, so basically that allows you to monitor very large networks, um, maybe across multiple locations. So you can have your master server in one location and then you can have slave servers in every single data center. You can have clusters of slave servers. So those, those slaves can obviously monitor large numbers of devices in each location. Um, and we have some very large systems being monitored by OpsView. And that's all managed from the central monitoring server. So you have a central view on what's going on and you have a central place to manage everything. Uh, we have SNMP uh, discovery and polling. So SNMP being the uh, most widely used protocol um, for monitoring and managing network devices. Uh, so within OpsView, we will do a certain amount of discovery um, and we'll pull network devices, pull information out of them. We also have SNMP trap processing. So this is when the network devices are sending out information, pushing the information to the monitoring system, and we'll take those traps, aggregate them, um, and based on a set of rules, decide what to do with them. So we'll look at what the trap says and then go, right, well, actually for this we want to raise a warning alert and send that out to, uh, send that out to the network admins. We also have uh, graphing of performance and trend data in OpsView, so you can kind of see over time what the utilization is of your storage network. You can see what CPU load is over time, 
um, and we have a long-term storage database, the data warehouse, which you can use to um, do some analysis and generate reports from. And as well as the web UI, we also have an API, uh, or several APIs, um, one for configuration, we have an API for notification, we have Nagios's API for generating alerts. So the point about that is that you can actually automate um, the task of managing your, your monitoring system. It isn't just about using the web user interface. You can use the API to, um, you can script against the API to actually generate all the objects um, via that, which is very good when you've got sort of build environments or using virtualization. You can hook it all into the same set of scripts. So why OpsView, or you know, perhaps more accurately, what, why should you be interested in OpsView? Um, well, as I said, it's scalable, it's very flexible, partly because it's open source and partly to do the way we've designed it. Um, we, we like to hope it's easy to maintain, that's one of the um, main design considerations. Um, it's mature, and I'll come on to the history in a minute, and it's Nagios compatible. So, um, you know, in one sense, we're sort of um, benefiting from the fact that Nagios is widely used and widely understood, but also um, we, we try and contribute back where we can, so we contribute a lot of patches upstream and a lot of modifications, um, many of which get incorporated into um, Nagios and Nagios 3, for example. So in terms of what's in OpsView, um, we have OpsView is mainly developed in Perl, so we have a lot of Perl and CPAN modules. Uh, we use Catalyst, um, which is a web framework, so the application is written in Catalyst, and MySQL is, the, um, is a database sitting underneath it. In fact, we have four separate databases that comprise the OpsView system, uh, one containing the configuration, one containing the um, current status information, we have a data warehouse and a reporting database. And we bring together Nagios and a bunch of associated Nagios tools or projects. So Nagios has its own ecosystem of projects. So we integrate uh, a bunch of those together under the OpsView umbrella and also bring in NetSNMP, MRTG and NMIS. And that's not a complete list, that's just um, some of the more uh, significant components. So a bit of history and another sip of water. Uh, the project was started in 2003 and really, it came out of um, working with Nagios and doing some projects around it and thinking, well, or in fact, the, the people we were doing the project for were saying, you know, Nagios is great, but it'd be excellent if it could do these extra things, and maybe it'd be nice to have a web UI to actually configure and manage the system. So that's uh, what really started the OpsView project. And it really was initially just a, a bunch of bolt-ons to Nagios. But then, quite soon, it became more than just a bunch of bolt-ons and a more integrated framework for allowing us to manage the configuration and, and pull together all these underlying components in a coherent system. So, I mean, it isn't just uh, add-ons to Nagios. It actually is quite a, quite a large amount of code sitting around that now. So version one was released in 2004, um, and I was still heavily involved in the development then. Um, and then Tom Voon joined in uh, 2005, and his first release was 1.5. And Tom is also the um, development lead for the pro plugins project, um, Nagios plugins project. So he's heavily involved in Nagios through that, as well as OpsView. He has several roles. Um, and then Tom sort of took on majority of the development work um, into OpsView version two, uh, which was released in 2006. And since 2006 until the end of last year, really, uh, we were continuing to develop OpsView version 2, um, so 2.14.3 is the latest uh, release of the 2.0 stream, or 2 stream. Um, and then, um, towards the end of last year, actually in August, in fact, um, we were out in San Francisco at Linux World, and uh, we won the award for best systems management tool out there, which was great, um, and we're up against some of the other um, open source system management tools, so that kind of was... Uh, uh, that was pleasing for us, I think, <laughs> and we weren't expecting it, um, so that was a good experience. And then, uh, from recently, uh, about three days ago, in fact, we released OpsView version 3, so that is uh, just released, and that's sort of exciting for us and, uh, and a good step forward, and, and provides a nice, um, a nice sort of set of foundations for developing more functionality within OpsView 3 as we, as we move forward. And I'll come on to that uh, in, a, in a bit later. So just sort of touching on the uh, commercial aspect of what we do, and this isn't meant as a sales pitch, it's just sort of, just to give you a bit of insight into how we work, really. Um, so, you know, obviously sits within a commercial framework, it, it's part of a, there's a commercial company sitting on top of it, um, like there is in many open source projects now. And the, uh, and the company makes its money out of services, you know, again, not an unusual model. 
Um, and the core development team work at Opsira. So basically, Opsira is sponsoring the development of Opsu and uh, making money out of sort of providing services around Opsu, support being the most obvious one, and training and uh, implementation and so on. And we also get a lot of uh, functionality within Opsview sponsored by users and customers. So probably 70% or so of the functionality within Opsview has been sponsored by, um, by customers, which is kind of quite a nice way of, uh, of funding the project. And then the rest of the infrastructure and, uh, and time is, is sponsored by Opsira. Um, and we have an active community of uh, users, so, um, and that sort of seems to be growing. And there's definitely some uh, very active users. We've got several hundred people on the mailing list. And uh, I know we've got sort of hundreds of uh, systems out there. I, wouldn't, I can't say we've got thousands, but it's certainly in the hundreds, the uh, number that we do have. Um, and we have a number of customers. Um, so I, I suppose the significance of that is that we're actively getting involved in these systems, and we learn from working with customers, and that goes back into, into the development. So what's in Opsi version 3? Um, main chain is it's based on Magios 3. Uh, we've got a new performance graphing framework um, within Opsi 3, so that makes it easier to, uh, to get, in, get the performance graphing information out using RRDs, and also it's stored in a better format. Uh, we've improved the data warehouse. Um, we've made improvements to performance, including faster reloads, especially on very large systems. So doing the reload cycle is, is 10% quicker, and we expect uh, further improvements there. We've in integrated Nagviz, which is another popular sort of um, part of um, the Nagios um, ecosystem, and that's a nice tool for visualizing sort of status information. Um, and we've included a better out-of-the-box configuration, so when you set the system up, um, there's a better configuration um, to start off with, and made lots of minor improvements. In terms of the future, um, for Opsi version 3, we've developed a much more formal process for putting a roadmap in place. So we've got a roadmap covering the next 12 months, and we know pretty much what we're going to develop uh, within Opsview. And I'll come on to that if I've got some time after at the end of this. Um, we have a larger core development team, so there's more people working on the, um, on the software, and I expect that to get bigger as well. We've been improving our test infrastructure, which is always kind of a challenge. So you develop the code, and then you need to make sure you're testing it properly before you do releases. So we've improved it already for version 3, and we expect it to improve further. And there'll be more add-ons as well. So we already have sort of add-ons like SMS gateways and um, help desk integration tools um, and um, some reporting tools, and we expect those to get um, more developed over the next year as well. To find out more, um, so we have the opsu.org website, we have a download site um, with all the packages, and there's a VMware um, demo VM for you to download, which basically you can boot up and uh, has a working opsu system in there. And we have our IRC channel, and if you go to opsu.org, there's plenty of other places you can uh, find information, such as the documentation site um, and mailing lists and so on. In terms of the roadmap, um, which I haven't put on the slide because it's not quite sort of pinned down yet, but just to give you a bit of insight of what we have on there at the moment, um, there are plans to redesign the user interface really in terms of sort of look and feel. Um, I think it's functional at the moment, but not terribly pretty. So I think the plan is to make it look more appealing, but obviously not uh, take away from the usability, um, hopefully improve that in fact. We have plans to include multilingual support within OpsView at the moment. Um, there isn't a framework for doing that, but the plan is to put the framework in place so then we can start doing translations into other languages other than English. Um, we want to have um, develop some more event-based views. Um, at the moment, uh, monitoring views are very much oriented around status, what's happening now. Our uh, plan is to have event views, maybe you know, what, what happened in the last uh, six hours, um, what is the sort of correlation between all these events. We plan to have... Um, the ability to also start creating your own custom views built on the new um, graphing framework and the events views and the status views, so you can actually create your own views. Um, better integration with um, an open source reporting framework. I think that's an area that we need to do some work on, so we won't develop our own framework. We'll use one of the open source ones and provide better integration, probably some templates. Um, 
We want to improve um, out-of-the-box support for cluster monitoring. Again, it takes a little bit of work to monitor um, clusters, so HA, sort of Linux clusters, or network devices which with a sort of active-passive um, setup. So better out-of-the-box support for that. And also we want to extend and improve uh, contact profiles so you have a bit more flexibility with that. And that's some of the things we're looking to do um, on the roadmap. There's some other functionality that I can't sort of announce at this stage, but um, we will be talking about before too long. And I think I've almost run out of time. Um, so if there's any quick questions, I'll take them. Otherwise, I'll see you in the bar behind Janssen. Hi, at the back. We're using NSCA with a whole load of our own code is a simple answer to that. But yeah, I mean, you have a master server, there's two-way communication to the slave, and we push the configuration out to the slave. The slave does the monitoring, and I've run out of time, but I'll have a chat later. Thank you, everybody.